Welcome back to my G1 Retro Reviews. Today, we're taking a look at the original Transformers series episode, Trans Europe Express. And I do mean we, because today, I am joined by my buddy Proto Man from the Transformers Slag podcast. Say hi, Proto. What's up, what's up? How we all doing? In this episode, the Autobots race across Europe while the Decepticons cause trouble. We begin this episode with the Decepticons searching for the Pearl of Bahudin. Energy reading sound wave. Care Bears, stare! Man, this place is huge. Even with the Constructicons, we could dig for years without finding the thing. We need a professional archaeologist. A professional archaeologist? I don't suppose they're gearing up for an Indiana Jones crossover, are they? Meanwhile, in Paris, the Autobots are participating in a charity race across Europe, although one driver objects to their participation. Oh no, Ogi, remember, this is for charity. There's only one charity I care about, me. Who is that? That's Ogi Kane, the top driver in the US. Ogi Kane was actually referenced in the original Robots in Disguise cartoon where Skids was possessed by his spirit when he scanned the late legendary driver's car, forcing him to participate and win in any nearby race. I'll definitely have to have you on again when I eventually review Robots in Disguise and get to that episode. So the race is from Paris to Istanbul. Now that's over 27 hours of driving, even longer than the legendary Le Mans, which is a 24-hour race, which racers switch drivers, take breaks, and so on. But, so this episode, well, cartoon magic, I guess. Apparently the Autobots were sent here to protect Oggy Kane's car, which they suspect may be of interest to the Decepticons. Well, what do you know? That engine of his is made out of some kind of weird metal. Although not mentioned in the episode itself, in the original script, Oggy's engine was possibly made out of something called triple adamantium. Yes, that's right. Oggy's car or at least his engine, is made out of the same stuff as Wolverine's bones. Or Captain America's shield. Or at least comic book Captain America. Although, I gotta wonder, wouldn't that make his car considerably heavier? What sort of advantage would having an engine made of adamantium give you? They are very vague about what makes this engine special, but I have never heard of a special metal being one of the reasons. Both a Ferrari and a simple Toyota use aluminum for their engine blocks, but it's more about the size of the piston and how many and other factors that lead to an engine being special and powerful. I guess being the most indestructible metal in the Marvel Universe where Transformers kind of was in means something. As Proto Man mentioned earlier, this race begins in France, at what appears to be the Arc de Triomphe. And in the stands, we can spot a little girl in a yellow chapeau and a blue dress. If this girl looks familiar to you, that's because she bears a striking resemblance to Madeline, who's the titular star of the famous book series set in France. I actually used to watch the Madeline cartoon when I was a little kid, and I loved it. So I think it's pretty cool that it seems like the animators put an homage to her in this episode. So, the race finally begins, and we get a look at the Autobots who are competing in it. Trax, Smokescreen, Sunstreaker, Sideswipe, Bumblebee, Wheeljack, and finally, Blue Streak. What? No Mirage? Or Jazz? Proto, I'm sure you have plenty to say about the choice of Autobots, and maybe even the regular cars participating in this race. Funny that the race starts with a gun which is never seen in professional racing in the past 70 years. Maybe it's a nod to the donator of this race that we might learn about later. Kind of jumping ahead with that one. So first up, if I had to pick one Autobot from the 1984-1985 lineup that would have been the best for racing, it would have been Mirage. He's a Formula One, the peak of speed and handling, and everyone else would not even come close to him. But since this is a cross multiple countries race with multiple terrains, Mirage would have some serious trouble and that would fall into which Autobots would be perfect for it. As the writer David Wise, who was known for his work with Speed Racer, 
He picked well with Wheeljack, which is from the 1978 Lancia Stratos Turbo, a multiple time world rally off-road winner, and even has some 24-hour Le Mans experience, perfect for this 27-hour race. The Lambo brothers seem like a good choice, but the Countach 500 LP that they were based on was not the best car for racing and was very bad in aerodynamics and had terrible drag, which hurt its handling. Another pair is Blue Streak and Smokescreen, which are the famous Japanese Datsun Z 280ZX turbos. While Blue Streak is the stock model, Smokescreen is the legendary Electrotran Motive, which won multiple times in its IMSA track touring and is a very, very powerful car, even back in the 70s and the early 80s. And then we got the we gotta sell toys choices. We got tracks and we got Bumblebee. Now, the stock late 70s and early 80s Corvettes may be fast in the straight line, but they are terrible at handling and don't really have a place in a race like this. And as for Bumblebee, well, he ain't Herbie the Love Bug. Volkswagen Beetles are not race cars, and they cannot compete with a lineup like this. And I don't even want to talk about these characters and their tech specs, which are a mess from the start already. What's with Sideswipe and Sunstreaker having their tech specs swapped by mistake? and tracks claiming to go over 280 miles per hour. Keep in mind, the fastest legal road car is the Bugatti Veyron Supersport, and that could only do 270 miles an hour on a good day, and that's in the modern era. Not to mention, in the speed category of the tech specs of these Autobots, all of them are at 7, and Bumblebee is a 4. When we cut back to the Decepticons, Sadly, they didn't get some kind of Indiana Jones lookalike. No, instead we have this guy in a green suit named Terra Nova, which is Latin for New Land. Rumble puts what I assume are Energon cuffs on him, which he easily removes with a floor lamp. And I kind of love how you can see him scrambling up the hillside as Megatron and Soundwave are talking. You rarely see this kind of background detail in one of these shows. When Bumblebee and Blue Streak stop Augie Kane and pull him out of his car after he was driving rudely, we can see that his car has gullwing doors, which I think is pretty cool, just because of my love of Back to the Future and the DeLorean time machine. Although, Proto Man, I'm sure you have your own opinions on them. Uh, his car is using a bit of that Countach shape, what are called scissor doors, uh, or as people call them today, Lambor doors or Lambo doors. I find that his car and color are very much like that of the shooting star from one of the cars from Speed Racer. Maybe that might be a nod from David Wise, the writer of this episode. As for Augie's driving, while he pushed Bumblebee and that would be frowned upon, all his other driving that the Autobots were calling reckless were just timed aggressive overtaking, and that's super common in any motorsport, with dense packed cars in different packs. Racing is not for the faint of heart or modest. After all, the first person who loses in a race is second place. So, Megatron sends his new Stunticons to mess up the Autobots race. First, they take out Sonny and Sides. Then, Motormaster flattens Jackie, while the others hold a demolition derby on smokescreen. But, Blue Streak escapes, and he meets up with Professor Baranova. I mean, Professor Terranova. I'm getting my Transformers cartoons confused. I love this shot of Breakdown next to Sideswipe and Sunstreaker. All those LP500 Countaches together. Such a nice shot. Also a shout out to Dragstrip, another Formula One, the Tyrell P34, also known for its six wheel design. That, if not for being the most off-road episode, would have been the fastest car in this episode. With Motormaster taking out Wheeljack, the fastest car in this episode is now out of the race. The Decepticons then set their sights on Augie Kinney's car. They steal it, and Augie teams up with Blue Streak. You computer brains may think you're sharp, but watch what a real driver can do. Can a human driver actually drive better than an Autobot can drive themselves? Well, I guess that was sort of the idea of Headmasters, but still, I'm kind of doubtful. When it comes to the straight line, I feel a computer would probably do a better job at gear shifting and getting those synchro matches of the gears for a better straight line race, a drag race, if you will. 
But when you're talking the idiosyncrasies of off-road driving, all the little rocks in the road, feel the motion, you know, weather conditions, it's a 27-hour race, everything changes every moment. That's where computers will make mistakes where humans won't. The Decepticons finally find the Pearl of Bahudin. This is the power core of a weather controlling machine from Cybertron. The machine which housed it was destroyed, and the core had been buried for millions of years. We see the Nemesis crashing on the planet Earth, which they already found back in the episode Microbots. So I guess we're to assume that this weather controlling machine that Megatron mentions fell out of the ship as it was crashing, and it landed somewhere in Europe? Wait, wasn't the Nemesis found in South America? That's a far cry from Europe, or Persia, or Iran, or Istanbul, or wherever they're supposed to be. Megatron then exposits why he needs Augie's engine. I needed an energy-resistant metal. Fortunately, Simotech solved my problem for me when they invented an incredible alloy. The super-powered engine of your car is made of the metal I need. When Bumblebee swipes the pearl from Megatron, is it just me, or is he a lot smaller than usual? Aww, tiny Bumblebee! So cute! Bumblebee opens the pearl, unleashing the power within. You got the touch. What is this? You got the power! When the Stunticons combine into Menasaur, Augie sacrifices his car to stop the combiner, hitting him right in the face! Ouch! I guess that adamantium engine in the front engine bay was good for something. And Bumblebee blows up the power core before he is sent to the land of Oz. And this episode ends with Augie handing over the pearl to the Autobots, for them to apparently sell and give the money to charity. Although, if this is a historical artifact, shouldn't it be in a museum? It belongs in a museum! So do you! Well, that was an enjoyable episode. It was fun to see the Autobots participating in a race. And it was a good way to showcase the new Stunticons. Although, being the racing expert, I'm sure you have your own thoughts, Proto Man. I like that this episode showed some quick gear shifting and the three-pedal manual transmission layout on Augie's car, something that most fictional depictions of racing in this era lacked. While of the crew, Wheeljack should have won, but overall it was a fun little episode, and I hope the Autobots didn't sell the Pearl to the highest bidder that turned out to use it for something evil like G.I. Joe's Cobra and the Weather Dominator. It's also worth noting that this is one of the few episodes in Transformers where Optimus Prime is absent. Thank you to Proto Man for joining me on this G1 Retro Review, and lending his racing expertise. You can check him out on Twitter at simply Proto Man. I don't know how he got that handle. And you can hear more of his voice on the Transformers Slag podcast, with new segments every single day, and live streams every Saturday night. Well, what about you? What do you think of this episode of G1? Let me know down in the comments below. Remember to like, subscribe, and do all that other fun stuff. And I'll see you back here next week for the episode Cosmic Rust, another memorable episode of G1. So I'll see you back here next time for that.